Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Osaberg501, and today I want to do an overview of the Druid class in Diablo 4. Now, keep in mind, we're not going to have as much up-to-date information for the Druid because it was one of the classes that wasn't available in the most recent content creator playtest. So a lot of this stuff can end up changing before launch, but we still have a decent bit of information for the Druid from the years of updates from the developers. Now the Druid is going to be the shapeshifter class for Diablo 4, being able to transform into things like werebears or werewolves. And then the Druid is also going to be pretty heavily focused on being a caster. So most likely most builds are either going to be focused on being a caster or focused on shapeshifting. Now shapeshifting is actually going to be pretty fluid in Diablo 4 because if you use a skill that requires you be in werebear, you don't have to use an ability to become a werebear then use that skill using that skill will automatically transform you into the form you need to be in so you can very quickly change between forms by using different skills and then as a caster you're going to primarily be focusing on lightning and poison skills so you'll probably end up seeing a lot of caster builds that don't use any shape shifting as well and that brings us to the Druid's unique class mechanic, but the Druid is actually the only class in Diablo 4 that hasn't had its unique class mechanic explained by a developer or just released as information officially from Blizzard. But because of the endgame closed beta that had a ton of information leaked from, we actually know a decent bit of information from this system. But take all this information with a grain of salt, that beta was specifically for testing, that's why it had an NDA. So this system could change quite a lot before launch or be completely remade because this is also seeming to be the most boring unique class mechanic for Diablo 4 as well. So it's something that they may want to change quite a bit. Now at a baseline for the system, the druids are going to have four different spirit animals that they can give offerings to to get permanent stat buffs. So there's deer, eagle, wolf, and snake. And after doing a druid specific quest, you will start getting some druid specific loot, which is the offerings that you have to give to these spirit animals. And it's seeming like as of the information we have, you get to have one of these passive effects active from each one of these spirit animals at a time. And there's also and there's also a Diablo 4 build calculator that someone has made that has its information on it. So I'll link that so I'll link that in the description if you guys want to check it out for yourself. But keep in mind this is very work in progress information. So for instance, from the deer spirit animal, you could get prickle skin which gives you 796 thorns as its passive buff. Or you could get plus 10 maximum spirit from gift of the stag which is another one of the passive buffs from deer that you could choose. And remember, you can have one buff from each of these spirit animals. Then you have something like eagle which scythe talons gives 5% increased critical strike chance or Iron Feather that gives you plus 10% maximum health. Now some of these effects are much more substantial or interesting than just 5% critical strike chance, but a lot of them are just passive stat increases, which is why I think the system is a bit boring and probably why it hasn't been fully revealed by the developers. I would not be surprised if this system is heavily changed by the time the game is launched. And going off of the information we have for the Druid's unique class mechanic, it won't really change much of the other decisions you're going to be making when creating Druid builds. The most it's probably going to do is change your stat weighting and how much of a specific stat you're going to need from gear or from your paragon tree. And like all the other classes in Diablo 4, the Druid's abilities are split between six different categories. And these are just ways to group the different skills to give you a good idea of what skills in that specific category are going to perform like. And you can use any combinations of any of the different categories except ultimate. So if you want to use four basic skills and two spirit skills, you can. But for the ultimate category, you can only use one ultimate at a time. So first off, we have basic skills. And these are going to work pretty much in the exact same way that all the other basic skills for the other classes do. They're going to be spammable. For the druid, they're going to generate spirit, which is your main resource. They're usually going to be doing a lot less damage than skills from other categories. But again, they're completely spammable and they're going to generate you your main resource. So for an example, we have Earth Spike. You sunder the earth, impaling the first enemy hit, dealing damage. Each time you hit an enemy with Earth Spike, your chance to deal a crushing blow to that target is increased by 10%. Now, like I mentioned, we don't have a ton of up-to-date information on the Druid, and 
I'm not actually sure if the crushing blow system is going to be in the game at launch. Essentially crushing blow just allows your physical skills to have a chance to reduce a target's max health by a flat amount or a flat percentage. And that's legitimately the only information we've got about that system for the Druid since the game was first initially revealed years and years ago at, I think, BlizzCon 2018. And next up, we have Spirit Skills. Now, this category for most of the other classes are called Core Skills, and I know that a lot of the skill categories have been renamed at some point in Diablo 4's development, so I would not be surprised if Spirit Skills turns into Core Skills for the Druid as well, so keep that in mind. But Spirit Skills are generally going to be skills that are much stronger. They're going to have a resource cost, so for the Druid specifically, they're going to cost Spirit, and they're usually abilities you're going to end up creating your builds around. They're usually going to have more legendary effects and other effects that can be applied to them, and they're usually going to be able to hit more targets than your basic skills. So for an example, we have Pulverize. As a spirit cost of 30, you shapeshift into a werebear, slam the ground, dealing a large amount of damage to nearby enemies. So it has more of an AoE effect, a lot more damage, and a spirit cost. But another example, if you're going for more of a caster build, you have Tornado. As a spirit cost of 20, you conjure a vortex that moves forward and curves in a random direction, dealing damage every second. And again, like I mentioned, I think there's going to be a lot of builds that are focused on shapeshifting and a lot of builds that are focused on being a caster. And next up, we have defensive skills, and this category probably will not be renamed. Most of the other classes also have a defensive category. Now, defensive skills, they're generally focused on being able to keep you alive for longer or adding some type of utility for using that skill. A lot of the times, there'll be skills that increase movement speed that'll help you stay alive, give you damage reduction buffs, or make you completely immune to damage. And for an example, we have Cyclone Armor. This has a passive that powerful winds protect you, granting 15% ranged damage reduction, then when an enemy in melee range hits you, there's a 15% chance for the winds to knock it back. So this would be a very good build for casters, because if someone gets to melee range and they hit you, they have a chance to be knocked away, which is good for a caster, and then a caster is going to be more commonly being hit by range damage because you're not in melee and you're getting just a damage reduction on that. And another example would be Earthen Bulwark, which has a 15 second cooldown, rocks around you for 3 seconds, making you unstoppable so you can't be CC'd, and absorbing some amount of damage. Upon expiration, the rocks shatter, dealing a percentage of the remaining shield to nearby enemies. So just an activatable big shield makes you completely immune to CC, then depending on how much shield you have left, it'll blow up dealing AoE damage. And next up, we have Wraith skills. Now, we don't have a ton of examples for skills in this category, but these seem to be much more focused on caster builds and seem like they're going to be much bigger AoE-focused abilities. So, for instance, we have Hurricane, 15-second cooldown. Form a hurricane around you that deals massive damage to nearby enemies over 8 seconds. Now, this could be used as a shapeshifter, but again, I think these are being built in a bit more focus on being a caster. And then another example is Boulder. As a cooldown of 8 seconds, you unearth a large boulder that knocks back and crushes enemies, doing massive damage with each hit. And again, since it's an earth skill, it has a chance to deal a crushing blow. And next up, we have the companion skills category, because what would a druid be without being able to summon some companions? But also, with all the information I've seen for the druid so far, it's not seeming like you're going to see many builds completely focused on being like a summoner companion build. It seems like these skills are going to be more focused on you have one or two, and their filler skills will give you some additional damage or effects. For an example, we have wolves with an 8 second cooldown. The passive is summon two wolf companions that bite enemies for damage. Their active is you direct the wolves to focus on a specific enemy. The wolves have a 50% increased chance to critically strike that enemy. So you just passively have some wolves that are going to run around and deal damage. Then you can focus them on an enemy to have more crit and focus on the enemy you want to kill first. And then another example is Vine Creeper with a 15 second cooldown. The passive is a Vine Creeper periodically emerges from the ground and poisons nearby enemies for damage over 8 seconds. Then the active is Vines strangle enemies in a target area, poisoning them for a lot more damage over 6 seconds and stunning them for 2 seconds. So again, these 
these skills are incredibly strong, but I don't think you're going to have full companion builds. These are probably just going to be in addition to other builds focused more on casting or shapeshifting. And finally, we have the ultimate skill category. And again, you can only have one ultimate chosen at one time. And in Diablo 4, it's seeming to be a lot harder to get cooldown reduction. So unlike Diablo 3, where you could get ultimates to basically have no cooldown, in Diablo 4, they're truly going to have long cooldowns and they're going to be big, massive, incredibly strong skills, but they're not going to be the complete focus of your build. An example is Cataclysm, 90 second cooldown, a massive storm follows you for 10 seconds, tornadoes knock back enemies, and lightning strikes wildly for massive damage. So just a massive AoE damaging ability. Then another example is Grizzly Rage, a cooldown of 50 seconds. You shapeshift into a werebear for 5 seconds. You are granted new werebear skills and generate spirit 28% faster. You are unstoppable while this is active, so you cannot be CC'd in any way. And if I'm not mistaken, with this ability, even though we don't have a ton of information on it, you should actually be getting a full bar of special werebear abilities when in Grizzly Rage. And just a thought I had with this specific ultimate is that even though it only lasts for five seconds, there may be ways to increase the duration of this. So this may be an ability that you could potentially create your build around. Like maybe you get all the cooldown you can find, even though there's not going to be a lot of it. And then you somehow increase the duration of this ability so you can be in this grizzly rage much more often and have all of these unique abilities. That could potentially be a really fun build, even if it's not like a meta build that's super strong. But that's pretty much the entirety of the information we have for the Druid class in Diablo 4. Now the Druid is actually in a weird position because it was one of the three initially revealed classes for Diablo 4 back in 2018. So we have a bunch of old information on how hard abilities are hitting and information on all those abilities at the time. But like I mentioned, it's still the only class that hasn't had its unique class mechanic officially detailed by Blizzard. So we don't have that information and we don't have a lot of other up-to-date information on skills, even on if skill categories have had their name changed like the other classes. So I think the Druid is actually the class we have the least bit of up-to-date information on, even when compared to something like the Necromancer. But even with all that being said, I think there's enough information here to know if the Druid is a class that you're going to want to play as your main or try out as your first class. But that's pretty much all I want to go over for the Druid and Diablo 4. So subscribe if you want to see more Diablo 4 or other videos. Leave a like if you liked the video. Leave a comment down below what you guys think about the Druid. And thanks for watching.